All right. This no, is an app. No, no, try again. This No, is no, not that either. I think I'm getting the tone wrong. Yeah. So. No, that looks weird. It's dab TBS. <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. This is DBS. No, no, again, wrong. This. No, is what, is, what is that? No. This. No, wrong, no, wrong, wrong. Look, <sighs> let me show you. That's the tone. Let me, okay, here's how you do it. Like that. Never let go, Jack. What's, what's that? Like this, like this? Yeah, like this. Do you okay. understand? Yeah, yeah, I got it. You feel Go on, lead me to it. Okay. No. This. No. No. All right. You know what? I'm just going to do the rest of this with Thomas. I think that would be for the best. Yeah. It's yeah. not you, it's me. I agree. It's him. Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the Aston Martin DBS. In 2016, we got the DB11, and then in 2019 came the DBS Super Legera, meaning super light. But just like Subway stopped saying 100% real chicken, Aston removed the Super Legera part from the name last year. Maybe because at almost 4,000 pounds, it's not that light, is it? But it is monstrous. British muscle car taken to the extreme. $400,000 extreme. Aston Martin might be able to put Fernando Alonso on a podium, but can they show two idiots on holiday in California that they also know how to make the ultimate grand touring machine? Let's find out. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe, hit the bell. Power, twin turbocharged V12, rear wheel drive. I gotta be pretty careful here. This is such an impressive engine. And I mean, it already started great on paper, but when I hear turbocharged and, and a sports car, I find myself a bit deflated normally because I associate that with things like, oh, you have to get into the turbo threshold for it to push or there's lag or it stifles the sound. But the moment you add twin turbos and a metric ton of displacement, 5.2 liters, it turns into the Tom Cruise character from Tropic Thunder. And it lets those turbochargers do their thing. And then it tells them to step back and literally f their own face. They've managed to make this car feel 
naturally aspirates. And in fact, the only thing that betrays that concept is there is so much torque down low around town, thanks to those twin turbos, that this just constantly has so much power. I mean, they've beefed up the transmission, the eight speed, to handle the extra torque. It's got 663 pound feet of torque, which sends that power to the rear wheels through a carbon fiber prop shaft, spinning in an aluminum torque tube. That's science stuff, uh, it can deal with it. Downshifts are... Oh, there's a constant crackle as well. You know, you haven't got to just drive this car fast. It's, it's kind of like, it's entertaining at car park speeds. Here, I'll drop down to first gear. It just sounds like there's a constant storm going on in the distance as you rumble through any car park. I parked this at the gym here in LA just so I could rumble through it. I didn't go to the gym because it's not about lifting. It's about rumbling. And then when you want, you can get on it. And some people have said that this is over muscle. And yeah, I agree actually. Traction is not its friend. I've, I, even driving now, I've barely gone past half throttle. It, it just wants to break the rear end. And it does so in not the most progressive way. It just suddenly steps out. Um, ask me how I know. There's a bit of brown in the gray of this chair now. Like I'm sure it can do 3.4 seconds to 60, but that must be somewhere very sticky and very safe. I'm not gonna attempt that today, nor am I gonna attempt the 211 mile an hour top speed that this thing can do. But my God, is it comfortable at speed. Just the way a Grand Tour should be. And when it comes to super expensive GT cars, there are many rivals. When we drove the Bentley Continental GT, we said that it was special. But I think that maybe the Aston Martin represents where special meets cool. Okay, listen. I might not be an authority on cool. For example, I just had the best day at Disneyland and I bought myself a $200 Jedi costume. But cool is a, it's not a tangible thing. You can't measure it. But you know what? It's how I feel driving this ridiculous V12 idiot through the gate. Oh my God, it's so powerful. Seriously, there's two scenarios in this car. One, the traction control light does its best impression of a strobe. Or two, you have a massive crash. Because it cannot put its power down. It's not even cold out. But it's just constantly flickering at me. So how's the Aston handle a canyon? Not that well, if I'm being honest. I mean, the steering is great. It's actually quite talkative. Very sharp. But there's a lot of weight to move around. <laughs> you really feel it. You know, it's a bit dull in the corners. And you know what? Like, it is a massive GT car. It's still amazing for what, like, what it's doing right now is incredible. But it is not a Lotus. It is not a Miata, obviously. It is a continent crossing GT car. And for, I will say, for a Continent Crossing GT car, the ride is maybe a little bit, a little bit stiff. You know, it's livable, it's totally fine. And as much as I'm driving this in a canyon right now, we have been living with this all week long, and it is great. It's easy to drive. You can just chill out, put it down from Sport Plus mode into Comfort mode. You can pretend that you have Apple CarPlay and just cruise and it feels special the whole time. You've just got miles and miles of hood in front of you, a ridiculous V12 engine, a thunderstorm behind you. And all the while you're in a comfy seat and you get to look at an Aston Martin badge. <laughs> that does it for me, it, it really does it for me, honestly. 
You can count on half of one hand how many front engine V12 cars are out there. This is a rare beast. And it's a rare beast that I really quite like a lot. It isn't perfect. The transmission is a little bit slow. And as we'll talk about in a minute, there's quite a few issues in here. But for what I'm doing right now, driving through a canyon with a beautiful view, covering distance comfortably and very, very quickly, this is one of the best cars in the world for that. At least, at least in the way that it makes you feel when you're doing that. Let's throw on some music. And just drive. See the doors go up a little bit? They do go up, they go up and out. Yeah, well, not, not like, not like, like this. <laughs> not like kind this, of like a... But like at this. Subtly. Yeah, subtly, yeah. Speaking of subtle and not subtle. Okay. This sut unsubtly has two very mean competitors that come to mind. Okay. You mentioned the Continental GT. Yes. There's also the 812 Superfast from Ferrari. Oh, I know. Right, which That's is- That's a hundred grand more base than this though. It, a bit more, so yeah, something like that. Yeah. All right, but what about a McLaren 765 LT? That's, I think it's like 50 grand more. That's, <sighs> but that's an out and out supercar, but right? These are supercars, you're talking, yeah. Like the, the Aston Phil's an in-between. Is... It's a weird in-between because the Bentley is more towards comfort and plush and soft riding. Yes. But still sporty. And then you've got the Ferrari. And if the Ferrari, we haven't driven the 812, but if it's got the Ferrari stuff, the fast ratio steering, it's- well, We've driven an F12 and that was enough for me to go, I'll have it over this, but. I'm sorry, and that you can get after for cheaper. Yeah. But like this is still so cool. Yes. And I was just talking about this, but I just I love it. I love looking at it. I love standing beside it. It looks astonishing. I just love Aston Martins, so I just I inherently love this, right? Well, I, when the DB11 came out, I wasn't crazy about it. The, the kind of two tone with the, the paint, I, it didn't do much for me. But the, the slight subtle changes they've made to this, like this comes out wider, yeah. a giant fat grill on the front, yeah. the quad exhaust, this the way this comes here, it just tips it off. But I still think the Vanquish. The, the latest Vanquish is better looking. The Vanquish is really good looking. But this is mean. Also, I like to be able to say Vanquish. What a cool name for a car. Okay, so I will say that I like the previous gen stuff a little bit better. Like the smaller grills, a little bit more. You associate that with James Bond. This hasn't yep. been in Bond yet. <laughs> My favorite Aston Martin moment, other than like the obligatory, I have to say, the DB5 and Goldfinger and all that, yeah. is the beginning of Quantum of Solace. And that's a DBS. I see. That's the previous gen DBS. And previous, I just, previous. Previous, pre whatever. Previous. It's an older DBS, yes. and I love that scene. In the, in the tunnels, he's being chased by Alfa Romeos, and so DBS automatically is cool to Maybe me. you just need time. Maybe there just needs to be a sequel with this. But, but, well, he, well, can't, oh, spoiler alert. We can't even say what happened unless you haven't seen this it. Is, <laughs> I can't wait for Daniel Craig to drive this one. Yes. Um, <laughs> this is in China Gray. That's the name of it? China Gray. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can actually customize the DBS pretty adventurously. Well, I would hope so. Uh, this has been optioned with the 10 spoke, sorry, the 10 two spoke wheels, diamond cut wheels. Well, that's 10 times two too many spokes because I don't like the look of them. I think, uh, I, I agree with you. There, there is a two spoke wheel you can do that yeah. I think is stunning. Well, I, did, I just don't like, I don't usually like diamond cut wheels and this is like, or that style, and this is the, the like a showpiece for explaining why I don't like them. Yeah, how I mean just, do you want to get here? How, how mean, it looks like oh, the, <laughs> the wheels, the alloys that you get when you stop off on the side of the highway at a wheel shop and, <laughs> oh, yeah. and quickly change them on your Ultima. Or you, or you go to Canadian Tire for those yeah, Canadians this is an and you Ultima, buy them off the rack. Ultima Martin, as it stands. An Ultima Martin. Ultima Martin. <laughs> but if you remember, in the DBX, yeah. the, uh, the way you open the, the, the hood was hidden on the wrong side. This oh, one, right. This one's a bit more obvious now. Is it, is it clamshelly? Oh. And Not clamshell. There's your twin turbo V. Oh, it's a carbon fiber hood. Oh yeah. Oh DBS. man. There's it's a lot of carbon so cool. fiber on this. Like, may I direct your attention to the carbon fiber front splitter here? Yes. Um, which is I'm surprised it's still attached to the car, if I'm <laughs> being honest with you. Yeah. This car does not have a front axle lift. No, it does not. Uh, it needs one. It really, really needs so, one. So, so 
I, this scrapes everywhere. Everywhere. And, I, and don't everywhere. worry, Aston Martin. This is currently perfect right now. Yeah. But it's the plastic thing underneath, which is the, oh, that could have been bad piece that scratches on, scrapes on everything. So, er, and LA has all these dips and bumps and things. So of the cut horrifying, the horrifying, not having a front axle lift. It's not, and you can't option it. So ugh, I wish you could. Can we take a look at the inside? Because I mean, it's very cool out here, other than this little situation with the front axle lift and the weird wheels. Yeah. It's great. The inside is, well, 400 grand, mate. It, is yeah. it 400 grand? It, it, uh, Carbon fiber on the top here. I don't know. Okay. Look at the outside. It, it's, just keep focusing on this. The doors go up and out. Okay. All right, I don't want to poop on it. So I'm going to start with the Do nice. It. I'm going to start with the nice stuff. All right. Okay. My countrymen have a way with words. Yes. All right. So. This carbon fiber in the cabin here. Yeah. What are we used to calling that? Forged. Forged, carbon. right? Yeah. And then the opposite is like woven. Woven. Yeah. Not for Aston. Okay. This is chopped. <laughs> chopped. And then the woven version is twill. Twilled. Twilled. Which I actually think I think twill is used elsewhere as well. Yeah, well, yeah, twill is more of a fabric thing. Though. I loved chopped. And what we've learned, haven't we, that the chopped slash forged isn't as strong. Not, no, near, it, not nearly it, as strong. Uh, I don't. Yeah, it's not. It's not as strong. But it's also cheaper to make. It's cheaper. Yes. But in the, like for interior, uh, what Aston calls jewelry. Okay. Um, it, it's, Sorry. Literally, they call this stuff jewelry. It's, well, there's a jewelry section on the when you're specking on the website. Why are you adding yeah. another syllable to jewelry? Jewelry. Jewelry. <laughs> where? Where? Well, you say, can you say jewel? Jewel. Can you say baker? Baker. Bakery. Jewelry. 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 <laughs> um, um, all right. So this is a very uh, like nice looking interior for the most part. Yes. Um, like the design is cool. I personally prefer the previous gen design physically, but like you know I, I, the way that the door cuts in here, this whole thing, that all this stuff is is cool, and the leathers are really nice, and the materials are really nice. Yeah. There's there's some things. But there's some things that are not. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I like that Alcantara headline. I like there's a bit of extra yeah, stitch. There's good. a bit and of flare going chrome on. chrome on the on the on the mirror here. Yeah. Is really nice. This is over engineered for fun. Oh, we're going to the bad stuff now. No, no. Is this bad? It's fun. Okay, it's fun. Actually, you know what? It works quite well. It feels very like solid. It's also it child safe. The moment you push it there, it just goes back. All right, here, crush my hand. Go. Oh, that's pretty good. Gentle. Yeah. Gentle touch. The key, which fits perfectly in this little slot right here, is massive. <laughs> yeah. It's not heavy. No. It's just huge. And yeah, it, it, it just, doesn't fit. It in doesn't the slot. fit in that slot. <laughs> so what's that slot for? I don't know. What is it for? I tried to put my phone on it to use as Apple CarPlay because there's no Apple CarPlay in this car. What? No, you're joking. 400 grand. Mm, I wish I were. 2023? No, and so my phone doesn't sit there. So this is a great angle to completely cover up this utterly useless screen in this car and just put my phone there. <laughs> that's a big That's a big knock on this car, you know, because it's a Grand Tourer. It, th this isn't one of those cars, well, it's a supercar. I don't need the tech. Yeah, exactly. You want all the comforts in the tech. I can't believe that this doesn't have it. The DBX does, but, yes. th but this has the old Mercedes command system, so yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, not it's not a touch screen. You have the choice of this turn wheel or yeah. this pad here. And compared to what you get in a Bentley Continental GT. I don't even want to mention the B word inside this no, car, because it's, the, it's, you called the Bentley interior a yacht. Yeah, it is a yacht. It's got like hand oiled teak and like, you know, nautical themed like gauges that spin on the, but the thing is, is that Again, the, the Bentley Continental GT is not, doesn't have the same vibe as this car at all. This is like cool sports thing. Well, I actually think the James Continental- James Bond, sleek, you know. Uh, uh, listen, North Americans are really easily persuaded by something being in a film, right? Yeah. To be fair, I do want a Nimbus 2000, but <laughs> I actually think the new Continental is cool. I think it, it looks great. It, it is cool, but it is still a little bit old manny, no matter what you do. Explain this steering wheel to me. Oh, this is, well, this is an aftermarket steering wheel that somebody put on and they, you know, they ordered it on like a Facebook group and someone <laughs> hand stitched them and then <laughs> it doesn't look like a steering wheel you get in the car. It's just a, a weird shape. A and, weird and like shape, these yeah. buttons are not $400,000 style buttons. Even mm -hmm. these, these, these are plastic stalks. The, 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 these from are cool, the, From a Mercedes. Like no, this, they are. This, but the carbon fiber, like, like turn. Power shifters are great. Power shifters are great. Again, I have absolutely no problem with this car. It's just, it's just when you get to that price point and... Like the Bang Olufsen tweeters that come up, that's a nine thousand dollar extra. That sounds um, about right. But it's a great sound system. Yeah. The 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 problem is is 
Oh, well, the market has spoken. These these have been around for three or four years now, and they, yeah. they depreciate quite heavily. So, you can I think you can pick up a high mileage. Uh, one. Leave it to Aston Martin to like, you know, keep the normalcy to the to the car market. So, Cars okay. should depreciate heavily. I'm not going to speculate the the market price, but at market price, I have no problem with this interior. That's what I'll say. <laughs> okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah, the back seats are just for storage. No human can sit there. I mean, like a, a tiny child could sit behind you, and that's yeah. about it right now. But okay, so overall. I think that this car, and I hate keep continuing to use the word cool because it's stupid and it's unquantifiable and all of that, but when I drive this car, I cannot help but enjoy it. I feel cool. It's an Aston Martin. Looking at that badge on the steering wheel is awesome. And I totally understand why someone would spend this amount of money on it because they don't want a Bentley. They don't want a Ferrari. No. They want an Aston Martin. I will say that like big shout out to the Jag F Type R, which has all they've always been like a budget Aston. Yeah. And the F Type R has like 575 horsepower. It's quick. All wheel drive, usable. The interior is not much worse than this. No, no. And that car is like I, I love that that car exists. It absolutely is a budget Aston now that we've driven this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so respect to that car, but I still I I, I totally understand this car. Right. Yeah. Like it's cool. I actually word. think it's I, I think it's great. Oh, look at that. Great. It's Conclusion just... time. Great cool. It is common knowledge that Aston Martin draws equally from the wells of sportiness and luxury. And in that, there is always compromise. After this day of filming, I drove down to San Diego to visit that tall man that you saw at the beginning of the video, and on the rough concrete highways of Southern California, the cabin was louder and creakier than I expected, and didn't quite deal with the interruptions in the road surface as well as I would have liked. On the sporty side, yes, there are more powerful cars, like the 812 Superfast. And yes, as James said, some of those pesky McLarens could probably zip past it in a straight line. There are also definitely cheaper cars. The Lexus LC500, for example, even though it is a lot slower, like a lot, it's still a very special car to experience, and it costs $300,000 less. However, despite their flaws, the DB11 and the DBS remain the only new twin-turbocharged V12 sports cars you can buy. And for many, that, along with its legendary badge, creates quite an unbreakable bond. A James Bond, I'm sorry. Thanks for watching.